Welcome to part two, everybody, with this team right here that makes me feel all kinds of emotions. The Minnesota Vikings here in this second season of whatever this series even is. They've made it to the playoffs. We have a blizzard in Green Bay for a playoff game. So I suppose it's time to break out the long sleeves, layer up, and get ready for about inch and a half of snow here in Madden. It's never actually a blizzard. Players for both teams have trouble accelerating, changing directions, and reaching their normal top speed. All right, so we have playoff action against Green Bay. Now, last episode was literally supposed to be it, like the Vikings, one video, one day. But I don't know how to make content like that. I'd have to go down here and then go to here and do that like seven times. And I just, I just don't do that. If you want that experience, I mean, you miss out on me checking out practice squads and everything else and me rambling on in my intros helping make my videos continue to go longer and longer but i want to do a couple videos here and this is not like i'm ending the video after this packers game like that's not gonna happen i'm gonna make a big video if we beat the packers we're moving on if we lose to the packers we're going off season we're just gonna play the game I don't care where it ends but my goal here with this little rebuild however many parts this ends up being I'm just trying to get the Vikings a championship which might take all of franchise mode I'm not sure I've really done this scenario yet but what do I want to boost hard hitting or chess match give me the hit stick hit power here in Madden come on those fumbles are just too valuable both teams, no, actually, not that. Both teams, come on. Three press conferences in one week, though. Like, this is really busy. We're guaranteeing a win. We made it this far, and we didn't do so to lose to Green Bay. Oh, what? Why am I making Green Bay better? Plus five break tackle and hit power. They all have plus 10 hit power. What have I done? All right, good news. I think it's capped at plus five, but tackle is plus eight. So we want to run the ball on Green Bay, of course, and I just did a lot of scenarios that will make that tougher. So it's time for Kellen Mond to throw this team to a win. Today's weather forecast calls for blizzard-like conditions. 26 inches of snow falling in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Why isn't that what we get here in Madden? That would be fantastic. I want to see the grounds crew. Do NFL teams have grounds crews? They have someone pushing shovels between like quarters and at breaks to uh, clear off the yard lines and everything. I want that. This is melting. This is, I said inch and a half of snow. That's generous. All right, so we're going to go through these games pretty quick here because I'm not trying to make this a million episodes, but we'll start out watching the first drive for each team. Rogers downfield, it is incomplete. That is well covered. By the way, remember we are missing our number one corner, Casey Hayward, the ex Green Bay Packer. As Rogers throws on target, it's not Devontae Adams. We got a fumble right away. Minnesota football, two plays in. Kellen Mond, is he the quarterback of the future? 31 touchdowns, 6 interceptions. I seem to remember a Vikings quarterback wearing number 11 breaking out in his second season at the beginning of my fandom. And that team also went to the playoffs. They went to the NFC Championship game. Kellen Mond on first down. He's going to swing it out late to Dalvin Cook who makes a man miss. He goes flying and tries to play it off like nothing happened. Inside, running room, Dalvin, close to a first down. Oh, we're throwing on third and inches. Faith and in Mon, complete again, inside the 20. Alexander Madison. 
Put this in the end zone now. Kellen Mond on second down. Out of the pocket. Inside the 10. Sliding at the 5. Where's Dalvin? What happened to Dalvin Cook? It's third and two. You had him open. Mon lost it. We keep the ball. He had an open receiver though. You got to make the throw here. Slant is open. He's right there. Adam Thielen right here. Yeah, I didn't trade the number one overall pick, Justin Tucker, to not watch him put points on the board here. Beautiful. Daniil Hunter sacking Aaron Rodgers. That's a three and out for Green Bay. Nice start for Minnesota's defense. But then we go three and out. Big third down conversion for Green Bay. And a penalty here. Taking the Packers inside the five. Looks like they're going to get some points. Third and goal from the one. Kylan Hill touchdown. Feeling 19 yards for number 19. Minnesota inside the five. Dalvin Cook touchdown. But now Amari Rodgers getting them down the field. And suddenly we have all kinds of offense in this game. And Harris in hand. Forced fourth down. They score a touchdown anyway. You got Minnesota trailing by four at the four. And out of the I formation, a fullback dive. It's CJ Ham. He runs him over. 12 yards. CJ Ham, who went to Augustana University, and he's from Duluth, Minnesota. Oddly enough, Augustana University from South Dakota, also the Vikings. There's your fun fact for the day. That's a nice, powerful effort by Madison. Kellen Mond throwing. Uh-oh, you do not want to drift back like that. He's sacked. A long way to go, just playing it safe. Running room, Madison gets a block. That's a conversion! Playing it safe and still getting the first down. Kellen Mond's going to throw this one outside, and there's Justin Jefferson. Pressure on the way. They can't get to Mond, and that's on target once again. How about Justin Jefferson on back-to-back -back plays, helping us out? Irv Smith, the tight end here on first down. You have Mond stepping up. He got it out there. Madison turns up, and... That is a tackle by somebody wearing number four. Mond, one minute to go at the 28, lost the football, and now Green Bay takes over. Just when we had a really good drive going. Now how is this first half going to end? It's Rodgers from the empty set. He throws a laser that is knocked away. Third and five, setting up a screen pass, and they would have had something there. On we go to the second half, and Minnesota's putting something together. Big catches on this drive for Jeff Wolf and Dalvin Cook have us in business. Inside here, and some running room, not bad for Madison. This takes us to third and four. We trust Kellen Mond. Over the middle, nice catch, Alexander Madison. No idea why he's playing so much, but he's playing well. Second and seven, Mond. Spinning catch, touchdown! It's Justin Jefferson, and the Vikings have taken a third quarter lead. Intercepted, Harris in hand, and the Vikings take over, short field, and on third and 12, it's a gain of six, field goal. I'm wondering too if there's a stamina issue right now, and we're seeing like Madison play because of that, but the simming doesn't care. Because I'm only seeing Cook now when we're simming. 
Intercepted Harrison Smith this time. Rodgers intercepted twice. A big fumble earlier in the first half for Green Bay has given Minnesota the edge. There are only six minutes to go in the game, and here is Justin Tucker. This is a 46-yard try right hash. Got it away, Tucker! Good! This angle is terrible, by the way. I wish I had full camera control. Can you imagine, like, the all-22 views I could put together if I just had control of the camera? Rodgers is having some trouble today, and Green Bay, going forward on fourth down, just failed. And time is running out in this one. Four minutes left to go. Jefferson first down. Minnesota looking for the upset. We're almost done here in Wild Card Weekend. 23-14. Two timeouts left for Green Bay. Hand off, and not much there. Third down and 12. What's well, the capital of Wisconsin, everybody? Madison to the 11. Rodgers with 33 seconds left. This one is just about done, but wait a minute here. Green Bay is going to get a touchdown. That is Aaron Jones. So now they have to get the onside kick. Five-point game. Green Bay needs this for a chance. Oh, Minnesota struggled to pick it up, but eventually somebody gets it. Almost a very Vikings moment there. But that's going to do it, everybody. We have at least two playoff games today. Kellen Mond ends it 26-21 Vikings. You know, I didn't expect year two to be this successful. I blame the Vikings winning on last episode only being two seasons long. But hey, maybe there's a little more hope with this team than I thought. Oh, wow. That was a pretty good scenario. 2,500 experience for everyone. Kellen Mond becomes a 70 overall ahead of his second playoff game. And here we go again. Vikings, Saints, playoffs yet again. There we go. Yeah, that's the fatigue issue here. So you definitely don't want to be overworking certain players. And it might already be an issue for Dalvin. So might as well give backups these snaps. I've had the offense be split for some of that backup development. And then for the defense, looks like Michael Pierce is the main concern here. The New Orleans Saints starting quarterback, by the way, is Ian Book. He put up some big stats this year. I forgot to go check him out, but I have seen them before. He was the only quarterback when we were trading Kirk Cousins. And now we have Ian Book versus Kellen Mond with a spot in the NFC Championship game on the line. So Kellen Mond is playing his second road playoff game after Minnesota won their opener. Dalvin Cook tries to cut it left and there's maybe two yards of space. Not sure if he's going to be able to play much here when we're watching, but stamina late in the season you have to pay attention to. Kellen Mond, deep downfield. He's got him open. It's Thielen. 39 yards. At the 35, just like that. Now he's out of the pocket. He's going to tuck it and run inside the 20 to the 10. Kellen Mond all the way to the 9. Two receivers, two tight ends. Dalvin Cook trying to catch his breath. We move down the field so quickly. And Mond, complete Irv Smith at the two. One yard out. Kellen Mond back to pass. He throws it. Touchdown. Irv Smith and the Vikings score on their opening drive. 
New Orleans takes over at their own 25. Alvin Kamara is the running back and he's going absolutely nowhere. Well, that's why you bring in Michael Pierce right there. First down an absolute mess. Now Ian Book, he can run and he is going to get the first down. Nobody was over there. And Derek Barnett is shaken up. Ian Book goes play action and throws this one across the middle. And that is caught for a first down, Michael Thomas. Four-man rush. Book under pressure and he can't get away from Daniil Hunter. Here's Book, third and 16. He's got time, steps up, runs out of time, and he's sacked by Michael Pierce. We took care of Green Bay. And now in New Orleans, Kellen Mond converting third and seven. Late in the first quarter, trying to add on to this lead, it's KJ Osborne. Minnesota in business. Unless penalties take them out of business. But then Thielen for 24. Oh, that's not good. But that is touchdown Justin Jefferson. It is 14-0 Minnesota, New Orleans, though, driving. This began inside their own 10. Pierce is there again, but the pass is caught. It's Michael Thomas. Here's Ian Book on second down. He's running away from Michael Pierce again, and he continues to pick up rushing yards up to the 23. Ian Book on second and 10. Michael Pierce is there again. There's pressure on almost every single play. Let's see if on third and 11 they can get to him. Maybe sack him out of field goal range here. Minnesota only needs to send four. Pressure was about to get there, but Book responds. Oh, it's a fumble. Harrison Smith knocked it out. And it's recovered by a defender on the ground. Brandon Parks, the rookie linebacker. 14-0 and the football for Minnesota. On we go to the second half where Mackenzie Alexander has intercepted Ian Book. And Kellen Mond tries to add on to this lead, but he fumbled it. And it's recovered. Stay in field goal range here at the least. Three score game would be nice. Kellen Mond. He will throw it to the outside, hitting the check down to Dalvin. Brian O'Neill shaking up though. That's not good. Technically, Justin Tucker is a number one overall pick now. And from 44 yards, Justin Tucker drills it with ease. All right, it's the fourth quarter and things are starting to go New Orleans way. They have added a field goal and now a touchdown. Kellen Mond had thrown an interception on the first play of a Vikings drive, giving New Orleans that short field for the touchdown. So now it's a seven-point game in the fourth. Minnesota again driving. Mond, seven minutes left to go. He spins to his left, fires deep to the end zone. It's intercepted. No, running back Marshawn Lattimore to the 30 and taken down. But New Orleans has captured the momentum now. 10 points unanswered. They've taken the football. Kellen Mond trying to do too much. And now Ian Book, a chance to tie the game. Book sails. Deep sideline. What a catch! No! Down to the 25. Auden Tate. Pressure inside, Book throws outside, and again it's open. Ian Book on first down, he will throw it right to the end zone and ties the game right there. Way too easy. From 17-0 to all tied at 17.
Can Minnesota get it together now with the game on the line? They'll run it and go nowhere. Dalvin Cook is stuffed by Demario Davis, who had that interception I referenced earlier, by the way. Five and a half minutes to go. New Orleans sending pressure, and Mon never saw it, or somebody missed a block. Come on, third and 17, more pressure on the way. Mon's gonna fire deep downfield. He's open, he overthrew Jefferson. No! How do you do that there? Oh, I thought he had him, that throw looked good. And the Saints have a short field now. The Saints have maxed out momentum now. And we have 443 left to go. The Saints are going to run the football here. Big opening. Oh, what a hit by Harrison Smith. Fatigue is keeping Alvin Kamara out of the game right now. But it's a first down run inside the Viking 40. And now, if they take their time here, they can run this clock down. It's no guarantee we see this football again. Running right. There's Harrison once again. The Saints are met with third down and nine at the Viking 37. They're right on the edge of field goal range. Ian Book into coverage. It's caught by Michael Thomas. Really good positioning there, and the Saints have a new set of downs. This is it before the warning. They don't have to snap it, but they do. Ian Book, it's incomplete this time. Third and five, New Orleans. They're going to run it inside. Daniil Hunter's there. Late penalty now. Face mask. A face mask. It's the new 12th man in the huddle. Oh, no. Another late back-breaking penalty in the Superdome. Now we have to use our timeouts. Another run to the right side here to the five yard line. So one more stop and we can take this ball back. I formation, four yards out. They run it right and the tackle is made by Eric Kendrick's timeout Vikings. And the go ahead chip shot for New Orleans is good. They've scored 20 unanswered. I felt like this was going to be an easy win and we go to the NFC Championship game where things usually get interesting for Minnesota. But to get there now, we have to go at least force overtime. 74 yards from the end zone, one timeout left for Kellen Mond. He can't afford to miss Justin Jefferson this time. It's first and 10. Mond outside, that one's caught. Jefferson hit down at the 42 yard line. Quick to the line now, 60 seconds left. Good first play. Mond from the pocket. Mond hit as he throws. Oh, it lands in the middle of nowhere. 47 yard line's the target? Our target is a 64 yard field goal? That would be an NFL record. Or it would tie the existing one at least, right? Mond hit again. Oh no, he lost it. He couldn't see the ball. That was a touchdown. There was nobody home. Third and 10, Kellen Mond. More pressure, clean throw. Deep and incomplete, it's fourth down. And it all comes down to this right here. We need a miracle. Can this team find one? Kellen Mond, he's got time, that's for sure. He'll throw it deep downfield, and it's broken up! No! It's incomplete. Ian Book just wrote the next chapter of heartbreak for the Minnesota Vikings. How do you let that happen? completely collapsing and our season is done 
In his second season, Ian Book is going to the NFC Championship game. He was fourth in the NFL in passing yards this year. 44 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. In his first NFL season as a starter. Notre Dame fans now are wondering why they never got that guy. And it is the Miami Dolphins led by Super Bowl MVP Tua Tungavailoa who win the Super Bowl. Here are the awards on the right hand side. Sean Fenderson is your Rookie of the Year. So here we are development wise and Kellen Mond got nothing. So after that, do we end up drafting a quarterback? Or is Kellen Mond the franchise quarterback? Defensively, I don't think anything has changed. As a matter of fact, I think Kendrick's development went down. Regression is going to happen. He lost two developments or one? I don't know, but 19 points overall. The concerning one is Harrison Smith's regression especially with this massive contract like he's down 39 and he was down a lot last season too so if we wanted to release Harrison Smith we could there's only a 5.7 penalty well Derek Barnett definitely made the most of his prove it one year contract with Minnesota and because we have the cap space I would like to offer him this two-year extension close to 10 million a year no other major re-signings though, we'll take this to free agency now. We also had nobody retire by the way, just a lot of regression for these defensive players especially. So, we have 52 million dollars now to look at using in free agency. Aaron Rodgers is available, but so is TB12 himself. What do we do? Wow, Montez Sweat was available, and it'll take more than three years, $34 million to sign him, but I don't think it would be all that difficult. Definitely a little step up from the Derek Barnett contract. The best available corner right now is Jonathan Jones, and I think I'm definitely going to be offering him a contract. I'll make it a two-year deal even. Let's really make this a good offer for him. 95 points should easily beat San Francisco there. All right, let's go back to quarterback now. Aaron Rodgers, here are his ratings at this point. Excellent across the board. Tom Brady at 46 years old. 91 throw power. I mean, he's still really good too. How do we not at least offer to one of them? Now, if I offer what he actually wants, that leaves us with $8 million in cap room. And if we were to draft a quarterback this year, that would hurt. And obviously, it wouldn't benefit Kellen Mond. But Brady always takes less to go and try to get a ring, right? So, Aaron Rodgers' fair offer is more. I'll put in that $25.8 million offer to Brady. If he wants it, he can come to Minnesota. I think we all expected that maybe we would end up picking pretty high this year, but it ended up being a really good season. So if we want Matthew McGee or Taiwan Hunter, you gotta move up from 26. You're not getting either one there. Seth Adams might be there. So because it would be difficult to get any of these quarterbacks, I will keep that offer up for Brady. I found a really good running back. Marcus Reese from Mizzou. 449 speed, early first talent. Projected to go in the second round. Wow, another really good running back prospect. This is a loaded running back class. He had 32 reps. There are offensive linemen that can't put up 32. Wow, how about the combine here for Josh Donahue at center? projected in the third round but late one talent and just tore up the combine almost a clean sweep of first place 
Well, everybody, here we go. Moving on to the next round. I gave out some offers and... Oh, my! Tom Brady's a Viking. And so is Jonathan Jones. TB12. How about TB12 degrees in January on a good day? Welcome to Minnesota. We got to change that number, of course. Tom Brady has also requested that I consider offering a contract to his friend, Robert. And just like that, Gronk is also a Minnesota Viking. I mean, if this doesn't work, then what is going to for Minnesota? Star Dev across the board along the offensive line. You got great playmakers with Dalvin Cook, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Herb Smith, and Gronk. And now Tom Brady under center. Let's go. We're on to the draft. And the Chicago Bears select number one overall. So I think the main thing we have to do for this team now is shore up the defense a bit. Safety is probably the top need. And for the first round talents there, you do not need to take them in the first round. Or at least not early in the first. We don't have the best second round picks, so... I might just take a safety there when the opportunity arises. I have plenty of picks to look at moving up as well, so I would consider that. Especially packaging that first second round pick with like the other one and a three. Maybe you get two ones out of this draft. I'd like to get a corner and you have a couple options here early on. Cassius Whiteside and then Ben Rose, a zone archetype. And zone is a lot rarer than man to man if it was a bad year for us we'd probably just draft a quarterback but we'd have to move up way too far to potentially make that happen i am curious about how high they do go though and there's matthew mcgee first quarterback going to the giants taiwan hunter goes to the texans at number five Cole Palmer ends up going here at 17 to Carolina, but the top options already went. We'd have to pick super high to have a chance, so I think I played that well. Dwayne Anderson is perhaps the best player available in this combine is unbelievable. 4-8-40, 42 bench reps. We could move Fenderson outside, he can play it all. Anderson might be able to as well. I think I want him before I address safety, because I have options. For a third round pick, we're up seven spots to make sure we can get the player we want, and we definitely don't need all of these picks. We actually look like we're in pretty good shape right now as a team. So, not taking any chances. The pick is going to be Dwayne Anderson. Hidden development. You had to know that was going to be the case. The combine was just unbelievable. 95 strength, 78 speed at D tackle, 77 block shed, 72 power moves. That's an exciting pick right there. The goal now is to get one of the top safeties. And there are a lot in that tier. The highest is mid one. But there are multiple who have mid-first talent. So that's why I'm playing this a lot more patiently now. And the safeties aren't going. I think my favorite though is Dante Bonds at 6'4", running a 4'4", with zone coverage and catching in his top three. That to me is going to make him stand out the most. He's projected to go in the third. I'll give up a four to not mess around here. We're going up early in the second round now, and I am really excited about these picks we're making here. This is one of the best safety prospects I have seen, and there have been a lot of fun prospects I've seen overall in Madden 22's draft classes. Dante Bond, 75 hidden, 16 in true talent. A Notre Dame safety, perhaps to replace another Notre Dame safety. 72 tackle, 74 hit power. Love this pick. Wow, Josh Donahue just went one pick before us. I was going to draft him here. 
Should have just traded up like I did earlier, but I still have a lot of players here. Very highly rated. We're going to take Jared Porter now and add some running back depth. Early first round talent, not passing late in the second round as we add a 78 overall, our third hidden dev player. How about Jared Porter? Unbelievable ratings. Now we're giving up two fifth round picks to move up in the third. And we're just going to keep adding really, really good players here. Unbelievable combines. Tommy Gillisley, that's four hidden dev players in a row to start this draft. I didn't even check out his ratings. I guess we will later. We have too many late picks and I didn't scout anybody to spend them on. So five and a six to get us higher in the third round. And this time, the target is going to be a deep threat at receiver who ran a 4-2-9. P.J. Hill. 70 overall, you're kidding me. That's five hidden dev players. I don't know if editing the league to have 500 star dev makes the draft classes any different. Wow, he'd be a pretty good running back probably. But uh, I've never drafted five in a row to start a draft like this. 95 speed 81 catching we will take another safety he's not the best safety available but his combine is way better so i'm taking spencer ferguson 67 normal 59 209 91 speed might even be a player i moved a corner like at 59 209 with that tackling, like, yeah, he's more of a corner than a safety. I'll trade away the sixth for a six and a seven in the next draft. And with our last pick, I'm just going to select the player with the best combine out of the offensive lineman. It's John Daniels. 60 overall to end the draft. Not great. Obviously, a practice squad caliber player. And that is it, everybody. What an offseason for Minnesota. Oh, that's not it, apparently. I'll just take a future seven. I have no idea what to do with that pick. So we are now finished with the 2023 offseason. How about this draft, though? One first round pick, two seconds, two thirds, and they're all hidden development players. So much Rookie of the Year competition. Tommy Gillisley, by the way, I missed his ratings earlier. 87 speed, 84 strength with 73 finesse moves. Will need some time, but he's an elite athlete. He's also not wearing 78. How about 94? And then Jared Porter, the rookie running back, is going to wear number 7. And Dante Bonds, how about number 23 at strong safety? Jared Porter has asked a lot of questions in camp and is eager to learn more. What should I focus on immediate impact or long-term development? I have never seen this, but I think that he's probably not going to play a lot right away, so long-term development easily makes the most sense. This is the next week, by the way. I'm convinced that it's not a matter of if, but when he becomes great, coach. So what does this lead to? Wow, a dev trade upgrade. Dalvin Cook giving the rookie running back superstar development. Wow. Here are the preseason stats, by the way, as we prepare for another year with the Vikings. 6.2 a carry for Dalvin. That's what I'm talking about. Offensive line, Young keeps developing. P.J. Hill, not bad here in preseason. Will take nine catches for 98 yards. Defensively, got to step up that pass rush for sure. And it should be even better this season. So as we get on to the newest season of this little series, will adding Tom Brady make the difference for Minnesota? Let's find out. Week one was a win, 35-28 over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Three touchdowns for Brady, one touchdown for Sam Darnold. 
Whoa. Whoa. Where's Dalvin? It was Madison and Porter in week one. Lower averages here, but got some touchdowns. Wow. Najee Harris, eight for 118 in the air with two touchdowns on the ground. That's phenomenal. Two sacks for the defense, two interceptions. Dante Bonds in his debut, Brandon Parks. But what happened to Dalvin? Oh, he must have had a practice injury. Okay, so Dalvin's back. But that's what the practice injuries can do now. Those sudden moves. The Vikings have won their first four games of the season and in three of them have put up at least 35 points. Huge offensive showings. Here was the latest game. Four touchdowns for Brady, four touchdowns for Teddy, but three interceptions. A buck 65 on the ground for Cook. Jared Porter's getting the football as well. He should have a chance at Rookie of the Year. I don't remember. I think one of those rookie quarterbacks is probably starting in the AFC or the NFC, so don't count on winning any of those. And Cameron Bynum gets two interceptions. He's not even supposed to start. Whoa, ACL tear for Michael Pierce. That's a huge injury. And that's going to hurt the defense. Okay, we had Harrison Smith get hurt in practice. We had Eric Kendricks get hurt. And now with Michael Pierce done for the year, I think that we actually probably need to uh, look at a trade now. This doesn't happen much in my series, but I think that it's definitely a need. Even with Fenderson and Anderson. Kirk Cousins on the trade block. It's not working in Pittsburgh. That's right, Darnold was starting. But if we go to D tackles here, Grover Stewart, I mean, he's exactly what I'm looking for. High quality, defensive tackle, good run stopper. I don't have to look for anybody else. I want Grover Stewart. I didn't know much about him until last year when the Colts played the Vikings super early in the season. Then I knew who Grover Stewart was. But what is it going to take to acquire him? And what is his contract anyway? You never know with the CPU. Oh, rest of the year? All right. But they're not going to make this easy on me. I might have to include a player. This is not going to be easy now. Whoa, I didn't expect that to work. I was willing to trade Alexander Madison, and they make the deal straight up. Madison with star development for Grover Stewart. Now, I think he offers less in terms of pass rush than even Michael Pierce did. But I can't let that hurt our run defense. So we have Grover Stewart and we'll just use him in that run stopping role. By the way, I now have spent our staff points to make sure I have six focus player spots available. And we also have some big time contracts to think about right here. How about a six year deal for Justin Jefferson? How's that sound? Six years, $122 million. Done. Daniil Hunter at 28 years old wants a three year deal. I'd love to sign this contract, but I had a feeling it would take a couple tries. Oh, by the way, I think this might be a pretty good quarterback class. Just maybe. They could also all be very overrated. We'll see here. I'll scout them all. I have no idea what happens if we don't win the Super Bowl this year, but there are four first round options. Grant Bauer, late one talent. Jesse Clinton, late one talent. Skylar Lacey, late one. Alex Wynn, late one. So... I don't know about this quarterback class. I'm more interested in the cornerback class now. And immediately, two first round options, mid one and late one talent. Our first loss of the season is a close one in week six. We're now five and one. The Falcons were able to top us with Jacoby Brissett 
at quarterback, Daryl Henderson at running back. Kyle Pitts, of course, doing damage here. Wow, Dalvin Cook is now going to miss a couple weeks, so we're really relying on the rookie now, especially after trading Madison as well. He's actually only starting one week because the bye week came at the right time. So we gave up 17 in the first half here and then rattled off 24 unanswered to beat the Chargers. Tom Brady, two touchdowns. And why is Kane Nwongu getting the start here? Are they both hurt right now? Well, Justin Jefferson was able to help replace Dalvin Cook with 151 and 2 on the day. And defensively now, Daniil Hunter gets two sacks. Jonathan Jones, he gets the interception. Finally, Vikings beat the Cardinals. This moves us to 8-2 and two on the season. Definitely looking at a playoff spot. That's the expectation. We had almost 300 yards rushing between Porter and Dalvin Cook. What a game. Three more touchdowns, by the way, for Justin Jefferson. Now, Green Bay is also playing pretty well this year. They're 7-3. I know Rodgers was a free agent. Let's see what happened with them. Jordan Love. After all, 16 touchdowns, 11 picks. That's nothing special. Aaron Jones playing pretty well, though. Pretty good running game for Green Bay. Anthony Miller. Travis Fulgham. I don't think Rodgers wants to play with a receiving core like this. And then we go to the defense here. They got to be good on defense, right? Zadarius Smith, Preston Smith, Kenny Clark. That's terrific trio. And they're still together. And Jair Alexander. This looks to be a pretty good defensive team. But we win easily against them anyway. 31 to 13. Pretty easy game there. Two touchdowns for Brady. Not always putting up huge passing yards because our running game is really dynamic. Cook is getting a lot of carries. Jared Porter as well. Nwongu. They're all going to carry. And then Jefferson Thielen. Get it done in the air. We have a formula with this team. Wow. More injuries here adding up. PJ Hill. And now Dalvin Cook is hurt again. This time it's a broken hand. That's six weeks. We're going to need Jared Porter until the playoffs. And even then, probably in the second round is when Dalvin would be set to come back. We beat the Bears, but don't run for a lot of yards in this game. Tom Brady throws four touchdowns to help make up for the loss of Dalvin Cook. And we sure needed that in this game. Jefferson has another monster game. Jeff Wolf caught a touchdown. Grover Stewart, Fenderson, and Hunter all getting sacks. So if the season ended now, we are the number one seed currently in the NFC. We just have to maintain it now without Dalvin Cook. And our first playoff game could be with him. New injury though, and they're adding up for this team. And now Brandon Parks is missing seven weeks. And linebacker wasn't a strength to begin with. You know what? I think I have an idea. We're going to sign the veteran safety Jimmy Ward to play strong safety. Actually, he can play free safety. Dante Bonds can play strong safety. But now it's time for Harris and Smith with 82 speed. He's going to play linebacker now. So how about that? 77 here. Eric Kendrick still in the middle. And then he'd probably also have to be the sub linebacker in this situation. I don't want Bonds there because we don't have the safety depth now. He has to play there. This is not a Dre Tatum situation. Man, I miss Dre Tatum. The division is now wrapped up. Four straight wins. An overtime win this time against Green Bay in Lambeau. Good effort by Jordan Love and the Packers. We're struggling on the ground. We've really regressed there without Dalvin Cook, but we still keep winning. And Harrison Smith racks up nine tackles, two for a loss, playing linebacker. 
Dante Bonds took over his old role, gets an interception. I think we're starting to miss Dalvin Cook a little bit here, and we've lost two games in a row. We're not putting up the same production on offense. It's just not the same team. We really need Dalvin to come back. But we're playing ourselves out of that number one seed and would have to win a wild card game before seeing him again. Losing to the four win Lions here is a really bad sign. Again, the running game is not getting it done. We're struggling with Jared Porter. And we've lost three straight. A lot of tackles there for Harrison Smith. And our season will now end. Tom Brady going back to Tampa. Trying to give us a week 18 win to have some momentum going into the playoffs. TB12 gives us win number 12. It takes overtime. 513 yards. Brady throws four touchdowns and so does Mitchell Trubisky. Jared Porter has a really nice game. We run the ball really well on Tampa. Clearly their run defense is not the same anymore. Jeff Wolf has a massive day. 120 and 2. That's like the first time he's ever led us in receiving. And PJ Hill even had a touchdown in this game. So we end up the number two seed. Philly gets the one. That first round by would have been so nice, but we do get the seven seed San Francisco 49ers in the wild card round. We'll check out who this is for here. This is a scenario, I think, for the retiring veteran. But if we go to the injury report, Dalvin Cook, unless we have a scenario. Oh, he's going to be back. Perfect. Dalvin will be back. Brandon Parks, though, out, and obviously Michael Pierce. So Dalvin is back for the playoff run. And that's, of course, going to be next episode. I hope you enjoyed this video. Another one I'm trying to get a lot of content into. And if you're liking these more speedy rebuilds, I can definitely look to do more of these. On different games, too. Well, let's check out our stats before we end it. What an episode. Whirlwind with this team. 43 touchdowns with Tom Brady. 8 interceptions. Really, really good. Dalvin would have had so many yards if he didn't get hurt. Porter ended up out carrying him this season. Like, Dalvin might have had 16, 1700 if he didn't get hurt. Justin Jefferson, 1,317 touchdowns. Thielen over 1,000 as well. For the defense now, we have Kendricks and Harrison Smith with a ton of tackles. 12 sacks for Daniil Hunter, and then everybody else kind of disappointed in that department. Interceptions, we get those. Dante Bonds, maybe Rookie of the Year. Justin Tucker, only missed one field goal this year. So we ended up with the second highest scoring offense this year with the number three running game. Would have been number one, I imagine, if Dalvin doesn't get hurt. Tenth in scoring defense, second against the run. We have a chance here. This has not gone how I thought it would with Minnesota. So next episode, it's Tom Brady trying to lead the Vikings to the Super Bowl. Can Tom Brady actually do it for this franchise? We will find out. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed part two of this Vikings franchise rebuild. Leave your feedback down below. Let me know if once this is done, if you'd like more like this. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and soon we'll see if Brady can help the Minnesota Vikings finally get that title. Have a great day.